Hey YouTube, so I got a Corsair 128GB solid state hard drive that I'm going to be putting in my MacBook Pro over there. So these things are going for about $299 on Newegg.com right now. Um, there are a couple of advantages to having a solid state hard drive over a normal hard drive, one of which is the reliability of them. Uh, you don't have to worry about jerking your laptop around and scratching the spinning disk inside. So they are rated to last for over 100 years, if you can believe that. So another advantage is you will have a better battery life and much, much faster performance. So in my opinion, it's really worth some money. Um, Corsair, they tell us that this particular drive has read speeds of 128 megabytes per second and write speeds of 90 megabytes per second. But there have been people online that have been all over the place saying that they're getting sustained read speeds of over 180 megabytes per second and sustained write speeds of 150 megabytes per second. So that's about three times faster than a normal hard drive spinning at 7,200 RPM. Um, the drives that come in MacBooks are actually only spinning at 5,400 RPM, so they're significantly slower. So, we're going to need a few things to install this, first of which we will need a small Phillips screwdriver. We'll also need a T6 Torx screwdriver. Um, so I just have my little bit that I'm going to put on the driver. You can get these at pretty much any computer store. So without further ado, let's go ahead and install this driver. So, I have my MacBook Pro in front of me. And the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and flip it over to reveal the battery cover. And we're going to want to lift that little switch up. Um, and that will take the cover right off. So now that we have the cover off, you can see the hard drive. When you handle a hard drive or any computer component, you want to be extremely careful not to touch anything. I know that's hard to do. So, when you're handling a hard drive, the best thing to do is handle it from the sides. Don't touch the top or the circuit board. Over time, that can tend to uh, damage the components. So, just keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to need now our uh, Phillips screwdriver to take off the little mounting bracket that holds the drive in at the back. So, unscrew that and then lift that little bracket right out. Uh, once I'm able to get that bracket out, we will then lift out the drive at like a 30 degree angle and it will pull right out from the back. Now we need to disconnect the power and the SATA connection, like so. And like I said before, we want to uh, handle the drive by the sides. So what we're going to need to do now is take our uh, Torx screwdriver and unscrew the four screws on the side and then put them on the solid state hard drive. So one, two, three, and four. Okay, I'm going to move the screws from the hard drive and then to the solid state hard drive and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I now have those screws moved over to the solid state hard drive as you can see right there. So what we're going to want to do now is take our SATA connection and plug it into the drive like so. If I can get it in. Alright, so now at about a 30 degree angle we're going to want to insert the drive into the brackets on the computer. So insert it from the back first and then down to the front. So now we're going to take our bracket and slide it in there and then screw it in. Alright. So once we get that screwed back in, we will replace the battery door and then I will cut to the next clip and I will show you how the drive performs. I'm going to go ahead and uh, restore from Time Machine. So it will take me about two hours, a couple minutes for you. Alright. Okay, so successfully I have restored from Time Machine and I'm going to go ahead and do the initial loop for you. So, I'm going to use my iPhone as a stopwatch and we will time to see how long it takes to turn on. I will stop the timer once uh, um, the dock appears. So, 
So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. All right, ready? One, two, three. So BIOS is loading right now. So I'm going to do a lap time once I see the Apple logo. All right, spinning gear. And we have the dock on that screen, right? Stop. Okay, so it took 31 seconds from the initial push of the button, 19.4 seconds um, from the time that we uh, hit the lap button from the time the Apple logo appeared. So, let's go ahead and launch an application that normally takes quite a while to start. So, um, Photoshop is a pretty good example. I don't know if any of you guys use Photoshop ever, but that application, man, believe me, it takes forever to start up. Or at least it did using a normal hard drive. Like I said, this drive is about three times faster. So, here's Photoshop right down here. One, two, three loading right up there and it is open wow can you believe that alright I'm gonna go ahead and keep Photoshop open if you guys use Word on a Mac you know what I'm talking about it takes forever to boot up Let's try it now alright boom we're open that is truly amazing I'm gonna go ahead and launch uh, PowerPoint Boom. All right. Um, now, I don't know if any of you have ever done this, but I have tried to launch every application in my dock. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of every that, and I'm going to click on every application in my dock, and see if I get the spinning beach ball, and see how long it takes for everyone to load. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's start with Safari, Mail, Microsoft Messenger, iChat, Skype, Address Book iCal, Firefox, iTunes, iPhoto, iMovie, iDVD, GarageBand, iWeb, QuickTime, Photoshop, Dreamweaver, Pages, Numbers, Keynote, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Slingbox, and Preview. Okay, it looks like that is everything, and wow, everything but Sling Flare is open. Oh no, it just wants my attention. Okay, look at that. All of that is open. As you can see, the only application that wants my attention at the moment is the iWeb. So let's go ahead and see what it wants. Oh, it wants to uh, have me choose a template. Wow. So that is truly amazing at how fast it will launch applications. So let's go ahead and try closing all these down. Closing each application. Oh, iDVD wants me to hit the quit button here. Can't quit Finder. Skype iMovie, GarageBand, Word, Keynote, why doesn't iWeb want to close? Alright, so, that is how fast a solid state hard drive performs in a MacBook Pro. Now, like I talked about before, another advantage was the battery life. So let's go ahead and see how many hours I get using a solid state hard drive. Normally, when I'm using the dedicated graphics card in my MacBook Pro, I get about two to three hours, um, probably about two hours, 45 minutes. So, calculating up there. Let me go ahead and click here. I have a 98% charge at the moment. And it is calculating. Do 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 do. 
Okay, um, it takes about 20 seconds, and once I unplug the power for it to tell me about how many hours I'm, I'm going to get. So, oh, three hours and nine minutes. So about an extra 20 minutes or so. Which, hey, better than a poke in the eye, right? Alright, well, I will do more videos, and I will do a couple benchmark tests which are better than opening applications, and I will post those at a later time. So I think